Good day everyone, uh, we're back again here. Uh, it's actually the same lesson as the last video I did, but uh, we're going to do a little work on algebraic fractions here. And the, the key to this part of the course is one, recognising when you have an improper algebraic fraction, and then what do we do with it to make it more useful. Uh, this part and the ability to do this will come up way, way later in your course when you're looking at some graphs that are not your generic quadratic cubic type one. You get some crazy graphs that come out from these. If you've got your graphics calculator and you want to graph something like this, you'll find it'll come out with some, eh, they're a little bit funky. Uh, but for the moment we don't need to worry about what they look like. We've got to be able to spot them and then do something with them to make them into a different format. So talking about um, uh, improper and proper, let's just remember, an improper fraction is one where the top line is bigger than the bottom line. And this would be our converted proper fraction. So when we see something like this, the way we recognize that this is improper is that the highest power on the top line is higher than the highest power on the bottom line. So that's our key to say this has got to be an improper fraction. Now, you might say, yeah, but how am I going to know whether it's going to divide in or not. Well, that's the process we're going to go through. And you will recognize that x will divide into x cubed. Okay, It'll go in x squared times, actually. And that's all we need to know. We need to know that the bottom will divide into the top. Doesn't matter whether it's exactly. Doesn't matter whether it works out with a remainder. That's all right. Just like here, this came out with a remainder. It's one whole lot of three and one remainder out of three. Okay, we're one third of the way along to our next whole number. We get the same idea here. So when students struggle with this, I always say to them, just remember this is all you're doing. Gets a little more complex, but this is all you're doing. Okay? So let's crack away here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this top line, but I'm going to space it out a little bit, okay? So I'm going to leave my x cubed there for the moment. But I'm going to come along here and I'm going to write my 7x squared plus my 5x minus 1 divided by x minus 3. This just gives me a bit of room to, to work in here, okay? Now, how many times does x go into x cubed? It's going to go in x squared times. Think about your indice laws. If I do this, right, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put a 2 there now. Open a bracket and I'm going to put an x there. All right. Can you, you might say, well, what are you doing? Why, why is this working? Can you see how if I do that, if I was to multiply that bracket out, I would get back to here, wouldn't I? Right. Now the reason that I'm doing this is I want to get this x minus 3 into as many spots as I can along the top here. So I'm going to put x minus 3 here. All right. Now the key thing you've got to think here is, wait, you've put this in here, and I agree that x squared times x will get me back here. But won't that also give you another bit? It'll give me a minus 3x squared, won't it? But I don't want that. Well, that's okay, because what I do to cancel out the minus 3x squared, I put a plus 3x squared in there. Okay, let me write that a little neater. So this bit here that I get is cancelled out by this bit here, and this is the bit that I want. Okay. Now you might say, this seems like a lot of work. There's a couple of different ways you can do. You can do a synthetic and algebraic and other things like this, but this is a neat way to see it building out. So now what I'll do, I'll write here x squared. Uh, now, I might just write the top line, because the bottom line will stay the same all the way to the, almost the end. So x squared minus x minus 3. Now, combine these together, I've got plus 10x squared. Then I'm going to give myself some space, so I'll put my plus 5x over here and my minus 1. All right. Now then I think, actually I might write the bottom line, it'll look a lot neater if I do. Now I'm going to say, well, in this 10x squared, how do I get an x minus 3 out of that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the x squared part here, and I'm going to put in here x minus 3. OK? 
Okay? Then what that's going to allow me to do is you're going to see that this will give me that 10x squared back again. But this will give me a minus 30x. So therefore, to balance that, I've got to put a plus 30x in there. Okay? So now I've got the first term in terms of x minus 3, the second term in terms of x minus 3. I've now got to work on the third term, and I've got to combine these. So I'll be up here, I'll be x squared, that's our bell that's just gone, so I've got to move quickly here. Uh, hopefully you can follow along here. Uh, 10x, x minus 3. Now I've got 35x, and I'm going to put the minus 1 well over here all over x minus 3. Okay, now, the 35x, moving real quick, sorry. The 35x, I'm going to split that up into 35 brackets. Uh, oh, gee, this is going to take a while. Here we go. I'll write quickly. It's going to get a bit messy here. Uh, x minus 3. Split this up into 35 brackets x minus 3. All right, and then our minus 1 at the end. All right, got to keep moving. This is all going to stay the same now, but remember here I've got my 35x, I would need to add on, because I have minus 105 there, I'd have to add on 105 to balance that out. So therefore the last number is going to be 104 now. Right, now, last step is to recognise that if I just take this part right here, just looking at that part right there, this and all of these are going to cancel. So I would end up with x squared plus 10x plus 35. This, the 104, is my remainder. That's this bit here. So it's going to be plus 104 over x take 3. So if I divide this term, by x minus 3, the whole number part of it is this with this remainder, which matches exactly what we did here. Sorry about the rush at the end there. I'll try and get another example and do it later. Thanks very much. Hope that helps. Catch you later.